Hi, hello, Wombly here again, and we are back with more on this upcoming Snapmaker U1 3D printer, and how do I have one already? Well, I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> Never gets old, does it? I'm an unpaid beta tester, and what we are looking at is a preview of printing results from a pre-production model, so the final product and results will vary from what you see here. So yeah, this is absolutely not buying advice, and uh, this video right here says a little more on that. Today, we're still having a look at multicolor printing, and we're going to look at specifically this Pikachu right here. Uh, the perceptive viewer will notice something because this comes from the question, can you print more than four colors on the Snapmaker U1? And the answer is yes, with an asterisk. <laughs> we'll get to that. This came up weeks ago now in the Facebook group. I already put some pictures out. Uh, folks asking to see a great big Pokemon printed in six colors. I'm going for 160 millimeter Pikachu. Uh, the link to this model I'm using will be down below. And uh, shout out to DR. That's a real bummer, buddy. So if you're here, you probably know the U1's getting hyped for offering this affordable multi-tool head printing with one, two, three, four tool heads. So what are we on about talking about six colors? And for the uninitiated, we're talking about mid-print spool swaps. Um, so that's the asterisk. Uh, we're going to help a little bit, but there is a way to do this depending on the model. So for the unfamiliar, let's jump in the slicer, see how to set this up, and give it a try on the U1. All right, and we're back in Snapmaker Orca Slicer to show us this trick. So we've plain painted Pikachu uh, four colors. Notice the tongue is white, and we painted the stripes on the back in black. Uh, pretty cool. But if I freeze right here now, like I said, it's only four colors. And notice how the colors are separated by layer for this model. Now imagine you start this print out with brown loaded instead of black. Everything black would print brown, including the stripes on his back. If we'd also loaded pink instead of white to start, then the tongue would turn out pink. But then wouldn't the eyes and ears be brown and pink too? Yes, they would. Unless... Draw an imaginary line right here above the tongue, but before the nose prints. If we could get the printer to stop right there, it would give us a chance to swap out those two colors. We could load up the black and white, and the eyes and ears would be good to go. And boom, that's how you get six colors. And for a four tool printer in this particular model, we get two swaps in just a single pause command, which is even better. So how do we tell the U1 to pause? This part is actually the easy part. In Orca Slicer, if you just do the slice, you'll get a layer by layer preview. And if I grab the slider on the right, I can find right before the black starts, but after the tongue is finished printing and I can do a right click to add a pause command, you see it says insert pause at the beginning of this layer. If I give that a click, um, now if, and I'll also go back up here and I'll re-slice this. So let's get prepare and preview again. Uh, if I re-slice it, I'm going to get an imaginary black line where we just told it we want it to ask the printer to pause for us. Um, and so there you go. That's it. Now you can see here uh, in the preview on the right, it says it will pause at about three hours and 22 minutes into this five and a half hour print. Uh, and so that's it. Once the print starts, I just have to set a timer for about 3 hours 20 minutes, make sure I come back. The printer should wait for us, and that'll give us an opportunity to use that filament loading and unloading to swap out two rolls, and then we can tell the printer to keep going. Let's see what happens. And here we are loaded up with yellow, brown, pink, and red to get the print started, just like we talked about in the slicer. And you can see here on the screen, we mapped the brown to the black and the pink gets mapped to the white because uh, that's that's what we have loaded. And as we let her rip, got a little red booger across the plate, but oh well. You can't really see the brown stripe in the back here, uh, but it is back there. And we'll get to our pink tongue before the printer pauses. Once that pause hits, uh, you're just dumped in. It just sits on the screen, so I drill down to the filament menu and I just tell it, unload those two filaments, please. I did a whole video about this, but yeah, there is automatic loading and unloading for this printer. So if you want to see way too much detail, uh, you can go check this out. I'll put a link down below. But you just tell it when you which tools to load and unload, and here we are. We got our new filaments loaded. We go back to the home screen, tap on that uh, printing menu, and hit play so that it resumes. So we continue our 3D printing track. And you can see there now yellow, black, white, and red. And we're off to the races. And there we go. Black and white eyeballs and a little black nose. 
and as we keep going, uh, be a whole lot of yellow before we eventually get the black tips of his ears. Really good stuff. Okay, so we're at the kitchen counter with Pikachu, and... Yeah. Um, turned out pretty nice. Uh, we are going to collect all of our wasted filament. Oh, right, right, right. Hold on. I forgot to show the thing. We got to do a comparison here. Um, I'm going to show the waste that we actually got in just a second, but it's important to put it in context here. And I don't mean to pick on Bamboo Lab as part of this comparison. It's just a stand-in for filament changers here. I picked it because I own one. And on the record, I'll say that's it's an awesome little machine, probably still my most recommended if you're just getting started in 3D printing. It's just awesome value uh, for what it is, uh, super easy to get started with. But this is why I don't own an AMS Lite. So you can see here, theoretically the U1 is five and a half hours print time. It was a little longer than that because there's some preparation time that doesn't show up yet in this beta version of the slicer. That was a few minutes. We also needed a few minutes to uh, swap out the spools. Altogether, it was actually 5 hours 45 minutes for the Snapmaker U1. On a filament changer, we're talking over a day to do this multicolor print, which is bonkers. And then kind of even worse is a filament changer here is saying over 300 grams to prime and purge. See the flushed volume alone is about 300 grams. Whereas Pikachu himself is only 145. <laughs> so you got twice as much filament that's just flushed. And then lastly, theoretically, the U1 should only be about 24 grams for the wipe tower. Um, and so that's the part I'm about to talk about here. Let's take a look. All of our wasted filament. So we do have the initial nozzle prime. We do have a wipe tower. And I'd like to say this is a completely poop-free machine. That's not... That's not totally true. Um, there is a little bit of filament, and that is just basically from when you load the filament or when I changed the filament. So there is a little bit there. But let's see. Let's see if we actually got... First of all, look at him. He is so cute. Oh my goodness. If there's any weird edges... Um, that is... If there's any weird edges, that is probably from my bad paint job. But actually, look at that cheek pinch. Okay. Go to the scales, though. So, fire up the scale. Your grams. Pikachu, you are 142 grams. The tower is 23 grams. But wait, what about all of this from just starting up the print? Oh, we got an extra gram. Look out now. And those little guys there. Yeah, very so an extra gram. So we have a 24 gram wipe tower. We have one gram of poop. But again, this is just uh, from put, getting the filament started in the printer. Um, and I know this thing looks massive, but it's actually mostly hollow. Uh, I don't know if you can see that there. So yeah, 20. Oh, now I don't even see the poops on here. So all together we have 165 grams. Um, of that 165 grams we have <laughs> 140 grams of Pikachu. So the filament got put where it really matters. Um, yeah. You can see this is actually six colors. So we have the brown stripes on the back and a little pink tongue. Big red cheeks. But, uh, yeah. So it all turned out pretty epic. Who's a good boy? Hmm. You might need to brush your teeth, Pikachu. And so there's our little guy, Pika Pika. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Pikachu. There's our Pikachu, and isn't he handsome? So now we're going to do the part of the video about. You know, stuff that could have gone better and uh, find out who watched to the end. So uh, someone called it out as I kind of shared these glamour shots. First of all, that yeah, oh, the color transitions actually don't, they seem a little hairy. 
So I, you know what? I actually took that one back and checked the slicer, and it turns out that was that was how it was sliced. So you can blame this one on my sloppy painting. If you look really close here, for example, at the ears, the transitions from yellow to black there, and down at the tongue. So like in the black, you can see, you know, weird little steps. And the tongue has not a perfect oval from the transition from the tongue to his mouth. There's like a little step. Uh, but it turns out that was probably just my sloppy painting. Pretty much everything I saw had to do with with that. Uh, the the printer kind of, unfortunately, uh, was, faithfully reproduced my mistakes. Um, so take that as you will, but again, it was a quick paint job. I spent maybe half an hour prepping this in the slicer. Um, just, I tried to do a good job, but I guess I could have done better. And then, you know, an evening to print it off. And I, I will admit there was also one little beta tester problem I came across. So a shout out to the suggestion to test this. It was something I wanted to try out because it, it's a, it's a pretty fun trick. It didn't actually catch fire. <laughs> Don't worry about that. Uh, it's all I'm going to say about it for now was that, yeah, there there was a bug discovered in the course of doing this test. It's been reported to Snapmaker, um, and yeah, they're, they're working on it, so hopefully you don't have to worry about that, and at some point, maybe I'll do a follow-up about that, but for now, enough said. And at the end of the day, this Pikachu went to my buddy's kid. Love her to death. She's such a sweet kid. And he said I could share these pictures with you guys that, yeah, I was for a few days getting these messages from him like, dude, she won't, she's, she won't leave him anywhere, <laughs> which is just really cute. So it put a smile on her face. It put a smile on ours. Uh, yeah, this was a fun one. So, um, but yeah, that's it for this one. So we've checked a couple of these off. Uh, stay tuned if you're interested in more. Uh, cheers to Snapmaker again. Good luck on your campaign. And to you again, thanks for watching.